every word in your Bible is based upon agriculture. But see, particularly in our culture, we've got a disconnect with that now. We, we, we don't have an, a, an association with the land anymore so much as we used to. But our Father knows that, so He's doing this little thing called restoration. He's restoring all things through the ministry of Elijah. And one of the things He's restoring is getting us back to the land. Growing in Torah is really a means to use getting your hands dirty out in the field to teach some of the basic principles and I'd have to say some of the really deep principles, um, spiritual principles in our life. Brian has put together a program uh, where they start out with Bible study in the morning. And individually and together, they communally eat breakfast in the morning. And they go and do the chores, the things that are part of the farm. You can't get from reading in pages what you can get by doing with your hands. And then, but not only that, is the opportunity for just serving, serving others besides yourself. It's not a coincidence, growing in Torah. Even the word Torah itself is a word that traces back to rain being cast out of the clouds to water the field, to produce much fruit so we can live. Even the word itself, the word word, we use that word a lot. Well, what's in the word? What does the word say? What about the word? I only do what the word says. What does word mean? Word is a, is a Hebrew word that refers to a pasture, a place for, to find food. The source of food is actually what the agricultural background of the word for word is, apostles. Apostles in the Bible are, are, are words that mean little sprouts that come out from the ground. For any vegetable to grow, it takes about 60 to 90 days. So that's why we like to see people come for at least three months if they can. If they can. So they can see a, a, a plant be put in the ground and then harvest the results from that. When I see these young people out working in the fields, learning how to sow, learning how to cultivate these things, le learning how to graft. How many times does the Bible talk about grafting? Does not the Bible say that you and I, most of the people listening to my voice, are grafted into a natural tree? What does that mean? Well, these young people are going out and experiencing what it means to graft things in. They're beginning to understand why all of Yeshua's parables involve something going on out in that field. The program itself, if somebody wanted to give it a full thing, uh, goes from March 15th all the way up till Sukkot, which is around the end of September to October. Our Father has sovereignly chose seven times a year for His people to come together to worship together. One of those times is at the very end of the year, when the last harvests are coming in. Because, you see, thousands of years ago, the idea of planting something in the ground and watching it grow, you know what that meant? That meant, I'm going to live another year. You know, when the harvest came up and they were reaping and sowing these things, they were celebrating. Why? Because that meant they're going to live. What do we do today? We run down to the grocery store, we grab a can of peas. Okay? We don't run through the aisle celebrating the can of peas because we take it for granted where the food is coming forth from. But in the days of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, which is one of the reasons why we're called Abraham's seed, those seven times a year happened to be, those seven feasts of our Lord happened to be the seven times when they were reaping and sowing and harvesting their fields. And when they saw these things come up, they knew they were going to live another year. So they celebrated these things. Every year in the fall, uh, we go up to Brian's farm and we celebrate the Feast of Sukkot. And uh, we've been doing that for the last four, four years. And it's based out of Leviticus 23. And it's just keeping the commandments that uh, they are Yahweh's feast days. And we want to celebrate them. And Brian has so graciously, Brian and Nathan opened up their property to accommodate it. It started out when I first went there, there was like 60 folks on his coat, and now it's like 300. I would like to invite you, if you've never been to one of our gatherings, if you've never been to the coat, we would absolutely love to meet you. We'd have to love to share the time of Sukkot, the time of rejoicing. It's like none other. And when the eight days are over, you're going to cry when you leave your friends. I guarantee you, you're going to dance with your friends. You're going to you're going to to sing with your friends. You're going to learn some things, and you're going to sit around campfires all night long talking about the Father. 
there is a process that we need to go through because you're living there with a bunch of other people and so we want to make sure that this is going to be a good thing for those who come and then obviously a good thing for the, our, what ends up being our little family or our local our community there right on the farm. I really want to exhort you to be a part of something that is literally producing fruit. Not just saying it's producing fruit, but literally producing fruit. Yeah, there, there's, there's so much that we want to do with Growing in Torah, and we need help. We need, uh, we need support from other families, from, uh, from other believers. We want you to partner with us. We need your help. Uh, whatever it is the Father has given you to do, whether it's finances, if you can help with finances, there are so many things on the farm that need to be done, we could really use your finances. Whether it's your skills, if you have particular skills and the Father lays it on your heart to be able to give in that area, we, I'm sure we could use it. I would also like to suggest that I know I can do it, it's easy for me to do and I know it's easy for some of you to do as well, to sponsor someone for, for, for an entire season. To sponsor a youth for an entire for an entire year, to take the time to nurture one young woman or one young man, to watch them literally grow before your very eyes.